The Sony ZV-E10 Mark II is one of the best cameras you can use as a webcam for live streaming or video conference calls because it's so easy to use. But there are a few things that you'll wanna do to get the most out of your camera if you plan on using it as a webcam. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the best way to set up your ZV-E10 Mark II for live streaming. And be sure to stick around until the end because I'll be sharing some of the best accessories that you might wanna pick up as well. You gotta just press record. Hi everyone, it's Craig Pruitt with Think Media. Now I would encourage you to go grab your ZV-E10 Mark II to follow along with this tutorial, but let's just dive right into the setup, starting with the first thing you wanna do, which is just to make sure your camera is set to video mode. So there's a little dial on top of the camera, a little switch. You just wanna make sure it's in the middle position, set to video mode. And then you wanna make sure your shoot mode is set to either intelligent auto, if you don't know how to manually set your camera settings, or manual exposure, and you can dial in your aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO. There's a couple more things we need to adjust. First would be resolution, and this really is up to you. I prefer to stream in 1080p at 30 frames per second. If your stream destination does support 4K streaming, you could select 4K 30 FPS, but most people really will use 1080p for live streaming even in 2024. We recommend the file format XAVC SHD and then setting your record frame rate to 30 FPS and your record setting to 50 megabits at 422 10-bit. We also wanna make sure our auto power off temp is set to high. So this is especially important if you shoot in 4K, but it's really important just to do this no matter what. So go down to your power settings. Right here is number nine in the setup menu and go over to auto power off temp. And that's currently set to high because I set it to high. Yours might come set to standard, so just make sure you switch that over to the high setting. Now we need to decide which port we're going to live stream from. There are two ports that you can live stream from from the ZV-E10 Mark II. The first would be the USB-C port as well as the HDMI port. So I'm gonna show you how to do it from both options. First being the USB-C port. Step one is gonna be you need to plug in a USB-C cable to your computer and then plug that directly into your camera. When prompted, you want to select live stream with USB streaming. And then a weird thing about using the USB-C port is the settings are located in a different place. So what you need to do is go to the green network section and then go down to the second menu there to streaming and then select USB-C streaming. And that's where we're going to change our output resolution and frame rate. So what I'd recommend is select HD 1080p at 30 frames per second. You could also um, choose you know, 4K 30 if you'd prefer to stream in 4K. And you can also enable movie recording during streaming if you also wanna record internally to the camera's SD card when you are live streaming. Now, if you're gonna stream via the HDMI port, since this camera uses a micro HDMI port, we're gonna have to do one of two things. The first being, you're gonna have to purchase a micro to full size HDMI converter. This allows a standard HDMI cable to be converted to the smaller HDMI micro port so that you're able to stream from that micro port. Alternatively, you could purchase a special cable that is micro HDMI to full size HDMI and then you can plug that HDMI into your computer. So either way will work just fine. We use both of these types of cables and adapters here at Think Media, so we'll link those down in the description below. You'll also need what's known as an HDMI capture card. So you can't just plug in an HDMI cable directly into your your computer, you actually need a capture card to convert your camera signal into a recognizable feed by your camera. Now the USB-C port does this automatically, but the HDMI port does not do this. So you need an HDMI capture card in order for this to work. But overall, it actually is pretty simple to stream via HDMI. I just bring these two little adapters wherever I go. One is the capture card and one is the micro to full size HDMI adapter. And then I bring this HDMI cable and I can live stream anywhere in the world. Now that we have the camera set up for either HDMI or USB, USB-C streaming, we need to select what software we're gonna stream from. And one of the softwares that we love using at Think Media is StreamYard. This is one of the best live stream softwares available, especially if you do educational or tutorial type videos, kind of like this one that I'm doing right now. With StreamYard, you can live stream directly to Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitch, and other destinations. So we're gonna use StreamYard as our streaming platform today, but you can use a variety of streaming platforms or online recorders. So I'm gonna hop into StreamYard and right now you can see it's my computer's favorite FaceTime webcam, and we're gonna up the quality by using this camera right over here. So I'm gonna select our camera input, and right now it's set to USB 
video. And that's because I'm using an HDMI capture card. If you do use the USB-C cable, it will literally say ZVE10 Mark II as the input source. But in our case, we're using a capture card. So select USB video. And there it is. Look at that. We got a nice live stream camera feed from our ZVE10 Mark II. Looks really good. You also want to select your camera resolution. So 720p would be okay, but 1080p would be a lot better. So we're going to select 1080p. And then diving into our audio settings, we need to make sure that we select our mic input. I'm currently recording on the Samsung Q9U that's hooked into my computer. So I'm going to select that as my audio source. And then you can also select your speaker source. So if you're using headphones, you can do that or your speakers, whatever you choose. So pro tip here, it's always a good idea to run a test record on your own before you start streaming. So you can just hit record and play back the file to make sure it's sounding and looking good or you can have a guest hop on a pre-stream with you. And I've actually invited our Think Media editor, Nate, on the call to check out how this stream setup is looking, how it sounds and how it looks. So Nate, what do you think about this setup with the ZVE-10 Mark II? Well, this is looking extremely professional. Definitely impressed with this setup. The audio is really rich and clear, even from the Q9U. It looks like, what lens are you on, a 16 or yeah, on the kit lens? Yeah, we're using the kit lens for this stream and I'm actually impressed with the way That's it looks. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, that looks great. Yeah, awesome. Well, there are a few accessories that we want to make our audience be aware of to just maximize the potential of the ZV-E10 Mark II for streaming. And Nate has the first one on the list. What is that, Nate? Yeah, so if you are doing any sort of streaming that I highly recommend picking up this dummy battery, what it simply does is you plug this in, which kind of looks like a normal battery into your camera. You plug that in and then there's a cable that runs off and you can plug this into your wall. So you have indefinite battery life. You don't have to worry about the battery running out, but also it does help with some overheating issues as well as Craig has tested and found out. So highly recommend picking up this power supply, extend your shooting recording period, and you don't have to worry about battery dying. Yep, absolutely. And we have, well, I'll link down in the description below our long form overheating test video that we show and prove that the uh, continuous power supply helps a lot with overheating. So we'll link that in the description. The second uh, accessory you're going to want is a high speed USB-C data cable. So instead of just using a sort of power cable for your ZVE-10 to stream with, that's not gonna work very well because it's gonna limit your stream capabilities to 720p. So in order to get 1080p or 4K streaming, you need a high-speed data cable for USB-C. So we'll link that down in the description below as well. So Nate, what's our next accessory? You can definitely stream with just the USB cable or you could do through the HDMI, which I actually kind of prefer. You get a cleaner signal. So what you need to do to in order to get this up and running for your ZV-E10 Mark II is a micro HDMI. So here I have a small micro HDMI to full size HDMI right here. And then you're gonna wanna plug this into a capture card. One of my favorites is the Condor Blue capture card. I've used it for over a year now and had zero issues. I've used you know, some cheaper ones before, but they failed. So highly recommend the Condor Blue one. Plug this into the camera, plug this into the capture card, and that goes into your computer. And you can stream high quality 1080p with this setup. Yep, those are great accessories for HDMI capture. And the last accessory we'll mention is just a microphone upgrade. So currently I'm recording on the Samsung Q9U, which is a really rich sounding podcast microphone. And it's only about $149, I believe, at the time of recording this video. So that's a great option. You could also look at something like the Rode Video Mic Go 2, which has both a 3.5 millimeter uh, connector as well as a USB-C. So you can use either of those formats if you wanna use it for like a streaming USB-C input, that works great. Or you can plug it directly into your ZVE-10 Mark II right here via the 3.5 jack. So either option is great for that. And if you're looking for even more accessories for your ZVE-10 Mark II, we've put together a list of our 20 favorite accessories for this camera. So you can check that out here on the screen and we'll see you in the next video.